Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop background change video, we'll be changing this background and replacing it with this background. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button and also, of course, subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn a lot more, everything practically about Photoshop, then look at my complete training. You'll find a link for that in the description and also up in the upper right hand corner on those YouTube cards. Okay, let's get to it. For this Photoshop background change project, I have two pictures in here. Here's the first one, and then here's the second picture. Now, I've already combined this into one file, but it's easier to do. I just opened up the background image, and these are already at the same size, and then I use the file place command to place this image inside the same file. Okay, now the main object here, of course, is to remove this background and make this part of the image clear. And we'll do that by creating a careful selection along the figure here, little special stuff with the hair right down there. And once we have that selection made, we then can convert that into a layer mask, and you'll then see the other background in behind. Now once that's done, you'll see that there are some color adjustments that need to be made. Her coloration here is a nice daylight coloration for this scene. Once we switch to this scene, we need to adjust her colors to more match the coloration in this picture. So I'll do that as a secondary step. All right, to go ahead and make our selection, I'll be using the pen tool right over here. And to use this, it's best if you zoom in pretty tight. So I'll zoom in nice and close like that. There we go. And when you're working with the pen tool, if you click points like this, it's going to make straight lines between those points. If you click and drag, it makes curved lines between those points. Then you have these control handles you can use to adjust the curve. Now what I normally do on this is I'll go through and I'll make the basic path first. And I won't worry if I'm not exactly on I'll fix that in a second pass through. Also, while you're working on this, of course, it's easy just to click and drag, but you also can use the Alt key in here and pull your control handles out like that with the Alt key to control those. So you have that ability to control those points. And also, when you're in here, if you hold down the Control key, you can grab a point and move that point around to a different location. So while you're working, you can do some adjustments. Okay, let's just get rid of this stuff in here. Let's just delete some of those. Let's back up a few steps. And we'll start off fresh at the very bottom. I normally start just off the picture down here. You can do your paths outside of the picture as well. The reason I do that, it makes it very, very easy to go back and find the beginning spot when I want to then close down the path once I get clear around. Okay, so for where it's relatively easy, I'll just click on points. Where I have an obvious curve and it gets larger, I'll click and drag a little bit. And click and drag just a touch. So it's a process of going through and either clicking or clicking and dragging to find your points. So I see there's like a little, little dip right here, a little spot here. That's a good spot for just a point. Most of this is relatively smooth, and where your curves are longer, you can put your points further apart. Now, it's a bit of a time-intensive process to go ahead and put in all of these different points. You just need to take your time and slowly work around the image and do this. Now, again, don't worry about it. If they're not exactly right at this point, we'll fix that on the second pass through. Now, while you're doing this, if you hold the space bar down, you get this hand tool. This allows you to move the picture, just grab your picture and move the picture. Now, around the hair, I'm just going to put some points out here, just outside of the hair like that. We'll come back to the hair and we'll refine that edge when we get down to it. Okay, so along in here, again, just click and drag to begin to put in those curves and we'll adjust those on the next path. Okay, at this point I'm going to just pause the video 
and I'll finish putting my points around this whole figure here. And once I had the points completed, and I'm back down to my starting position down here, I'll then bring the video back up and we'll then go through and clean up that edge where those points are sitting. Okay, so I'll pause the video for me. It'll be a few minutes as I finish my points. For you, it'll be just a moment and we'll be right back on to that next step. Okay, there we go. I'm back to the beginning position as you can see down here. And let's just see what we've done. Gone clear around the whole image like this. There's a little bit of fixing up in here. That's fine. Clear on the outside, all the way down, just outside the picture down here, then straight across back to the first starting point, and that closes out that path. All right, now let's go ahead and clean this up. We'll be using a couple of tools over here to make this real easy. We have the direct selection tool right there. That's when you want to be using. Click on that. That grabs the selection, grabs your path. Click on a point like that. You then can control your control handles on that. Now to make this even better, I'll zoom in further. So you're real tight on here, make real nice exact kind of a path. So I'll start right down here at this one and we'll just move these around a little bit until I get them right on that edge. Now we're in so tight right now, this is going to be looking absolutely perfect on the finish. Now these things here, these are the control handles for that point. This allows me to control the curve. I can move the curve around this way and I can make the curve longer or shorter by pulling on either one of these ends in here. Okay, let's go ahead now and just kind of finish up a little bit of this. I won't do the whole thing in here. We'll save that again a little fast forward bit. But this is the basic concept. Just go through and adjust your positions on your points. Make sure they're exactly where you want them. And come in and adjust those control handles and get the curve nice and tight along the edge of your figure. Now this is also one of the reasons why you want to use the path tool here in the pen tool with the path tool is because you can get this exactly where you want it this way. You don't have quite that level of control if you're just using one of the other tools. Okay, so the rest of this just continues like this and I'll finish this off clear around the whole figure. And again, leaving the area right up here, I'll leave this area alone around the hair. We'll come back, we'll finish that separately. So at this point, I'll pause the video and I'll finish my adjustments on this and then I'll bring the video back up for the next step. Okay, so there's the path, nicely following clear around the whole figure. Don't worry about this right now and don't worry about that. Let's make sure that we're on the right layer. Let's double check over here. I'm going to close those channels down. Don't need those open. There we are. Now, the next thing to do is to convert this into a selection. Now, come inside any place in here and right click up. Oh, let's make sure we're still on our tool. There we go. Make sure you're on the direct select tool. There you go. Right click anywhere inside. And then, let's so click lower here. There we go. You can see that make selection right there. Just click on that. I have my radius set at one pixel. That just softens the edge down just a little bit and helps make for a nicer selection. I also have anti-aliased selected as well. Choose OK. And there's the selection. Now once we have a selection on here, we can go in and we can use the refine edge tool to clean up this little bit of hair over here. So. Let's go up to the select and let's come down to select and mask. There we are. I have the view up here set at overlay, which is what I normally use. And I have edge detection at all the defaults down here, smooth, feather, everything at the defaults, which is just fine for this. And then you can see there's the tool. You can adjust the size of the brush right up here. Make it all just a little bit larger. There we go. And then put your cross here right in the area you want to get rid of and then overlap that circle onto the area you want to keep. Now it's not going to be perfect. Notice we get a little bit there of some background stuff happening. We'll fix that 
in a minute. What I want though is to get that edge of the hair in there. Okay, that's good for that. Let's choose OK. There's our new selection. Now on this little bit we can clean that out. I'm going to zoom in. There we go. I want to get rid of that piece right there and that piece right here and that little thing out there. We don't need that. Notice it doesn't get all the hair. It actually gets more than it shows here. But it doesn't get all the hair. But it'll do a good job for what we need. We're in real tight right now so we won't even see some of that stuff. I'm going to go here to the regular lasso tool and I have it set at subtract from selection. And then just draw a little lasso around the parts you want to get rid of. There we go. And then let's just get this piece in here. Some background stuff just happens to match the coloration of the hair. Okay, that's good. Let's now back to fit on screen. We now need to get this bit in here added in. So I'll zoom in on that. Let's get this pretty large here so it actually fills the screen. There we go. Now this is inside of our selection. So we have the figure selected that's inside the selection. So I want to remove this from the selection. This time I'll just use a different tool over here. I'll use the polygonal lasso tool. And instead of it set for remove right there. And I'll just make a real careful little selection using this tool. Luckily this is a real easy area. Very, very basic shape in here. And just carefully go along and make a nice clean selection of this negative area. When you're using this tool, take your time. Don't click too fast. If you click too fast, it's going to collapse the selection down and that's going to mess everything up and you'll have to start over again. So just take your time with this particular tool. Breathe deep, get into your Zen mode, and then just carefully work around. Now the nice thing about this is you can take your time on finding your spots and then when you click it puts a point and it connects the line between those points. Just don't click too fast. What it actually does is if you double click it closes the selection. Now you don't want that to happen. Okay, just kind of slowly come around here to the beginning point again. As soon as I get that beginning point it will then close that out and remove that from the existing selection. Okay, that's all done. Let's now fit on screen. At this point, we're ready to put our mask in. And that's easy. Just come down here to the mask button right there, add layer mask, click on that. There's your layer mask and there is your figure on top of the background. Now we can come in and take a look at the edge. You may have a little bit of lightness. You had a light background behind her and we have some dark stuff in here. So you may see a little bit of white around some of the edges. It may or may not be important. There's a little bit in here, just a touch, but because there's lights in the background, that looks appropriate. So I'm just going to leave that on there. That's okay. There's a little bit up in here. Again, because I have light in the background, it's actually fine to have a little bit of that light edge. I'm not going to be worrying about that. It's only a problem if it looks unnatural. Right down here, though, there's just a little bit way down there. This little bit does look unnatural because it's a dark background. There's no lights behind here. So let's just get rid of this. Now, on the layer mask, white shows, black hides. So all I need to do is to grab a black pen, or black paintbrush rather. Here's our foreground color. Set it to black. Grab the paintbrush. I'm going to bring the size down. I want this to be a 100% hardness. And let's bring our size down. There we go. It's a real small brush. And again, I'm painting black and I'm on the mask. Look for that white outline. So you're on the mask. And then just carefully paint black into the mask right over that edge. And that will just extend the mask a little bit in just enough to hide that little bit of the light background from the original picture that's showing in there. And again, you can use the space bar to move your picture around. There's a little bit up in here as well. Let's just get rid of some of this. Where the background goes light again, that's okay. It looks natural. It's just where it's dark in here. It doesn't look like it's natural. You want to get rid of that unnatural effect. Like 
Like that's probably okay. That's not so good. But I'll take this all out. The stuff on the left side of the picture looked more appropriate than the stuff on the right side of the picture in this particular image. Like right here is a little bit right there, but we have lights in here and that makes sense. I'm not going to bother with that. Same thing on the left hand side. We have a bit of that edge showing in here, but because we have a lot of lights right back up in here and up in the city, this looks natural, so I'll leave it. Okay, back to our fit on screen. So we cleaned up that edge down there, looks good. Again, that's fine. Now we need to adjust the values. Obviously, she's too white at this point. We have a lot of oranges in the background here, a real kind of reddish orange sky, a lot of orange in the lights in here, a little bit of blue down there, which kind of matches that coloration here, which is fine. We need to warm her up a little bit. So we'll do that with an adjustment layer. Go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer. I'm going to use a photo filter, and I'll just clip this to this one layer. Use Previous Layer to create Clipping Mask. In other words, this is going to be applying the Adjustment Layer onto just the Figure Layer. We don't want to have any color change on the background. So while we're doing this, choose OK. There we go. You can see that there's before and there's after. It's subtle, but we just warmed up her tones a bit, and that already helps her blend in with the picture. It looks more appropriate blending in with the picture. Now we may want to increase this just a little bit. You can adjust the amount in here with the density. And I think I'll take up just about to 40, 41, somewhere in there. So there's before and here's after. Again, we're just trying to bring some warmth into the picture because there's a lot of warmth back in here just to help kind of blend these together. And I think that looks good. I think we still need to work on our highlights just a little bit in here. So let's add another adjustment layer. So layer and new adjustment layer. This time let's do color balance right there. Bring that up. And again, let's clip this to that one layer. Here we go. Now in this we can adjust the shadows or the midtones or the highlights. I'm looking at the highlights. I don't want it quite so rich. So I'm going to bring this to the cyan just a little bit here, maybe just about three. Let's see how that looks. It's just a little bit cooler on that. Very, very subtle again. I'll bring in some magenta. So a little less green, a little more magenta. Again, let's double check how that looks. And that looks better. Again, real subtle little adjustments in here. I'm going to add in some blue, just a touch of blue in here. Let's go ahead and pull this up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. So it brings in some blue into the highlights, which kind of brings in the effect down below there. Let's see how that looks. That's looking pretty good. I think I'll actually pull that blue back to zero. Now that I'm looking at it, I don't think I really need that one. Let's see how we go. Okay, I think that looks good. Again, real subtle, just little tweaks on the coloration in here. And then finally, let's look at our saturation on this. And we'll do that with the hue saturation. Again, one more adjustment layer. Come in here to new adjustment layer and hue saturation. And again, clip this to that one layer. Here we go. The coloration we've already taken care of, so you can ignore the hue. And let's just bring our saturation up a bit because we have real saturated colors back in there. So I want to bring our saturation up in the foreground here. Maybe about to, oh, 22 looks pretty good. And let's double check that. Click this little eyeball down here. There's before, there's after. So it's really saturating the image, bringing in that effect we have back there. It's still a bit too bright, though. So I think I can bring our lightness down just a little bit, maybe down to, oh, about 7. And let's see how this looks. There's before and there's after. And there we go. I think she blends in very nicely now. Let's go ahead and close that out. And there it is. So that's our changing our background and then adjusting the foreground image to blend in color-wise, hue saturation-wise with our background. Let's see how this looks. I'm going to make a copy of this layer here. I'll drag it down to the new layer button. There we go. Now whenever you do that, all this stuff gets unlinked, so I'll have to fix that. Just pull this to the top, and I'll get rid of this layer mask on that. So there's the original. 
and on these I'm going to right click and do clipping mask to put these back where they were just link those back to just the figure okay so there is our original and there is our changed background so you can see it's really a two-step process the first step is to use a layer mask to get rid of the background and then your second step is to use your adjustment layers to adjust the quality of your foreground to match the new background so it looks like it actually is from the same photograph. So there you go, there is our Photoshop background change. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.